Hey, this is Fred from The Fly Project, here today to talk about some ways that I use a Scandi line for trout spay. On our last video, we had a comment from Scandi Andy, and he wanted to know precisely uh, some of the ways that we do uh, use a Scandi line. We initially talked about Skagit. Skagit's a great way to get into trout spay, to learn to spay cast. And then uh, there is another whole avenue of trout spay fishing, general spay fishing that you can do with what we term as a Scandi line. And a Scandi line is essentially like a floating line that you would use on your normal single hand rod. You can get a Scandi line in either a head format where you would have a head and a running line or an integrated format where you can have one solid line that has the, uh, the head and the, and the uh, running line all attached. One of our favorite lines for fishing uh, here in Montana that we like to use is the Scandi Integrated from Scientific Anglers. And it is perfect because a lot of times in our situations we don't need to cast a long distance. So having the loop-to-loop -loop connections that you have when you have a, a head um, can be a little bit annoying. And then sometimes we actually like to retrieve our flies. So not having those loop connections does allow us to retrieve those flies in closer than where that uh, head transition would be. So it's just a real clean and efficient way to, uh, to set up and, and cast and fish. Then on that line, um, most people consider the Scandi as a great trout line for fishing soft tackles and real small streamers. Um, there's some, uh, some balancing that you can do with the, uh, the length of your leader to do um, either soft tackles or um, streamers. And you can actually throw some surprisingly heavy streamers with the, uh, the Scandi setup if you uh, make some adjustments to your leader. So typically when I'm setting up, um, if I'm gonna do a soft tackle where I wanna be real high in the water column, I'm gonna start out with a nine foot leader. I typically go for a two X. And then on that leader, I'm gonna attach a tippet ring. Nice thing about running with the tippet ring is your nine foot leader is gonna essentially stay the same length. And then to the end of that tippet, I'm gonna add, or to that tippet ring, I'm gonna add my tippet down to my, either my single soft tackle fly, or if I want to do a two fly rig, I'm gonna drop my, uh, my front fly, which is often a weighted fly, off that tippet ring. That ring makes a nice clean connection. Um, it's much stronger than trying to run a tag off of a knot, which when I do that, it usually seems to fail in the fish if they eat this one. Um, I haven't had a lot of success with that. It also tangles less. Um, even if it makes a few wraps around there, it usually, the weight of that fly will, will pull it right off. This particular rig, I've got a balance leech tied on with a soft tackle behind it. A lot of times in the winter, I find this is a really effective uh, two fly rig that uh, Balance leech gives me depth and sometimes if the fish just don't want the bigger leech they will pick up that soft tackle So it's a it's a really great solution for a fishing both a streamer and a soft tackle and covering um, all the uh, choices that the fish might want If I'm going to go with just a straight um, Streamer and, and maybe a bigger streamer than this one I'm generally going to either do away with the tippet ring and tie directly to that nine foot leader or keep my um, my dropper or tippet length fairly short. With the Scandi line, you don't have a sink tip to create your anchor point like you do with the Skagit body line. With the Skagit body, you have the entire line in the air and the sink tip creating your anchor stick point, and that allows the load for your cast. With the Scandi line, you have the entire floating line in the air, and the only thing that's typically creating your anchor point is the fly line, I mean, is the leader itself. So if you're running an unweighted fly, you're typically gonna want that leader length to be anywhere from 12, 13, even 14 feet long. And then if you add more mass to that system, you're gonna need to shorten that leader down until you hit that point where it just unload or pulls off the water naturally. So I find that a nine foot leader with a weighted fly will actually cast relatively smoothly. Whereas if I'm going with just a soft tackle, I'm gonna to need to increase the length of that leader out to, you know, say 12, 13 feet or so. And that balances out that smooth cast. One other element is if I'm fishing soft tackles or near the surface film, I wanna typically go with a nylon leader. If I wanna get a little deeper 
I'm going to switch to a fluorocarbon leader and fluorocarbon tippet. It is amazing what a difference that makes. Uh, a lot of times in the winter, I prefer to use the Scandi line because I'll be fishing a run where the fish are in real slow water. They may be three to five feet deep. If I run a Skagit through there, not only do I sometimes scrape the bottom, but I also end up spooking fish with the tip of that fly line. If I want to make continued casts through a particular run, that Scandi line allows me to stay on the surface. But then with that longer leader, I can be fishing just my flies down where the fish are. And using that fluorocarbon leader really gets the depth a lot easier than uh, nylon. So a couple things about Scandi lines to uh, help hopefully increase your fishing uh, success and different ways to use them. Uh, if you have questions, we are always happy to answer them. Just leave them in the comments. Uh, the products such as that line, these leaders, and all this good stuff can be found at flyproject.us.